the 14 inch M1 Pro Mac. To be honest, has been on my mind for the past few weeks. I was juggling on whether to make another big investment right now. And when I said big, I meant 80% of my personal saving kind of big. Or should I just use what I have at the moment, which is the M1 Mac, which I reviewed a year ago or two year ago. And after giving it some thoughts, I made my decision. And that is to go with my M1 Mac, which I have at the moment. And here are my why. Hello everyone, this is Sam and I have been doing freelancing job as a cinematographer and photographer for about four years. And as time passes by, I gradually improve my gear toward videography and photography. And currently, I edit my A74 photos and video on my M1 Mac, which I have been using for about a year and eight months to two years already. And today, I will be reviewing my experience with using the M1 Mac. Before we get started, this review is for people who are on tight budget, like myself. Well, in today's video, I am going to share with you lot different categories of what I think are important as a cinematographer and photographer freelancer and how each category will hold up within the period of two years using my M1 Mac. I will be reviewing the laptop based on those two categories and those categories are performance and power. Later in the video, I will also be sharing with you guys what I was right and wrong about my decision when it comes to purchasing the M1 Mac two years ago. And mind you, these are based on my personal experiences with using the M1 Mac on a daily for photos and video editing. So firstly, let us go with the battery life. The battery life of the M1 Mac when I bought it was spectacular. There are days when I literally go to sleep without even charging it. But how does it hold up two years later? Well. In my personal experience, it is relatively similar in terms of internet browsing. But when it comes to heavy and intensive tasks, the gap of old and new battery is a bit longer and a bit bigger. Picture this. When I bought my M1 Mac, I would spend from five to seven hours on and off doing intensive editing work like Final Cut Pro, or Capture One, Luminar AI. But right now, two years later, it shortened roughly um, to about three to five hours and sometimes even less depending on the effect I use while doing my work. So it might seem like a big gap, but to me, three to five hours is still decent since I mostly have the charger with me almost at all times in case the battery dies and I'm able to charge my laptop. So for me personally, I have no problem thus far with my M1 Mac. And actually the other day while traveling on my bus to the province, I spent nearly two hours editing my video with heavy effect and it was still at 40% when I arrived at my destination. So for my review with the battery life on the M1 Mac, two years later, it is not a big problem for me at all. But be sure to share your thoughts down below if you somehow feel unsatisfied with the battery life um, after using the M1 Mac for quite a while. Secondly, let us talk about performance. To be honest with you, this past weekend, I was really tempted into buying the new 14-inch M1 Pro. However, considering the budget that I have, it would be a massive risk to buy the M1 Mac Pro. And so I had to review my performance on the M1 Mac. And quite frankly, to be real with you, the M1 Mac Pro still performed greatly, in my opinion. And what do I mean by great? What is defined by great? Well, firstly, I experienced very minimal lack doing intensive tasks like uh, effects on video editing using Final Cut Pro and also graphic intensive tasks using my Affinity Designer or Photoshop or Affinity Photo Capture Room or Capture Room etc. So I thought to myself if I experience minimal issue when editing video and almost no issue when doing graphic or photo editing tasks is a new M1 Pro really going to deliver that huge of a difference? Well, maybe my editing experience can be a bit better. But when I think of the budget that I 
I have at the moment, I think I would be fine with my M1 MacBook Pro. Anyway, just like what I said, I experienced minimal issue when doing intensive tasks, but that also happened because I know the nitty gritty of, of the Mac, for example, letting my video properly render before editing them or editing in proxy and much more, which I might make a separate video about. But overall, with the budget that I have at the moment and the experience that I have, I am quite satisfied with what I have at the moment with the M1 Mac. So overall, it looks like I really enjoy the M1 MacBook Pro and to a certain extent, I have been loving the laptop that I spent so much money on and I still do love it. However, there were also some expectations that were not met when I initially bought the laptop. So let us go over some of the things that I was wrong regarding my purchase toward the M1 Mac. Firstly, I was wrong in thinking that I need a new laptop, a new M1 Mac Pro right now. When in reality, after reviewing my performance, my experience, it turns out I'm doing just fine and decent and okay. Of course, later down the line, I might need to upgrade to get a performance boost and, and a bit more with a bit more budget, the upgrade might seem reasonable and I would go for that jump. But currently, the risk is a bit too big. And with today's consumer-driven and materialistic world, I was nearly guided into thinking that an upgrade is necessary, is what I need at the moment. When in reality, I don't need it. And I guess I was wrong about feeling that my M1 Pro is useless and or just plainly isn't enough. So that is what I was wrong about my thought process of the M1 Pro. Secondly, let's talk about what I was right when purchasing the M1 Pro machine. Firstly, I would say that I made the right decision in buying the 16 gig of RAM uh, for what I do because there are days and times when my laptop literally alert me that I have no space in my memory and that is me with 16 gig of RAM. Imagine if I bought a laptop with 8 gig of, gig of RAM. That would be a disaster. And to you guys who are purchasing a new MacBook Pro in the future, make sure to choose the 16 gig of RAM option because that will give you a lot more room um, to, to play with in terms of editing photos and video and it also will future proof what you have regarding the machine that you bought. The second thing that I was right when it comes to purchasing my M1 Pro was that I was right in thinking that the M1 Pro will completely change the way that I work and it is true. I have loved the machine that I have been using over the past one year and eight months to two years because it has been absolutely amazing with smooth editing, smooth workflow and crazy productivity. I just need a monitor which I'm actually in the market for at the moment and might make a video about that very soon. However, I was really glad to upgrade from my 2017 Intel MacBook Pro to the M1 Pro and that really gave me tremendous power boost and tremendous productivity and it has opened me up to new ideas of how to work even crazily efficient, uh, efficiently. And so this is it. This has been my M1 MacBook Pro review of using it for two years. And, and overall, I'm really glad that I bought the machine and I didn't really upgrade to a new machine. So that is my personal experience, my personal review. If you guys have similar experiences or um, bad experience with the M1 MacBook Pro, be sure to share it in the comment down below. And yeah, before we end the video, I just want to say that a tech, a laptop, a phone, they're like your partners in exploring a journey together. So before you bid them farewell and move on to the next better thing, maybe you can ask yourself, do I really need it? And ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the video. With that being said, this has been Sam reviewing the M1 MacBook Pro for the past two years. And yeah, have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.